Chapter 6, Never Seen How can we have a stowaway, Fitz asked as Mr. Forkel shouted, Show yourself! Nothing happened for a moment. Then Della appeared behind Bianna. Mom, Fitz said, rushing to tuckle hug her before he shouted at his sister. How could you keep this secret? I made you swear not to say anything, Della explained. And I only involved her because I needed to hold on to someone while we were teleporting. Why the subterfuge? Mr. Forkel asked. Please tell me you don't doubt our ability to protect your children. Quite the opposite, Della straightened her gown, looking like an ocean goddess in an aquamarine silk. I'm here to join the Black Swan. The words seemed to dangle, waiting for someone to reach out and grab them. Does Dad know? Fitz asked. Of course. He wanted to join, but we decided he'd be more useful if he stayed working with the council. And my talents are far better suited for covert activities. For covert activities. Miss Vacker, Mr. Forkel started. Della, she corrected. Your offer is very generous, Miss Della. Mr. Forkel emphasized with a slight smile. But we already have a vanisher working with us. No one can vanish the way I can, not even my son. And I'm sure you've heard how valuable Alvar has been to the council. She blinked out of sight, reappearing a second later, knee-deep in the river. Sophie wasn't sure what was crazier, how fast Della had moved or how she hadn't caused ripples in the water. Impressive, Mr. Forkel admitted when Della reappeared next to Bianna and showed how her gown was still dry. But the question is whether letting you join would be wise. Someone as high profile as yourself could be an influential advocate. Della finished for him. When the council finally comes to their senses, do you think the public will instantly trust you? The Vacker name may have had a few controversies lately, but it still holds incredible influence and power. Mr. Forkel studied Della. I see you've already removed your registry pendant. I would never put any of you at risk. Plus, I wanted to prove that I'm committed. And yet, you make the commitment too lightly. Do I? Della's melodic voice hardened. I've trusted my children and three others who might as well be my family to your care. Your children's situation is different, Mr. Forkel argued. We both know we can't leave them to the council's cap caprice. But I could protect them on my own, Della vanished again, reappearing with a melder pressed to Mr. Forkel's head. Do not underestimate me, sir. You're not the only one with tricks up their sleeve, Mr. Forkel warned her. He tapped his right temple and Della's arm dropped to her side. Are you a mesmer? Sophie asked, remembering Grady's similar fits. My tricks are more limited, Mr. Forkel admitted. But the mind is more powerful than the body. Never forget that. I won't, Della said, vanishing the same instant Mr. Forkel collapsed. She reappeared, balanced on his belly with one of her jeweled shoes pressed against his throat. He kicked and trashed, but couldn't throw her off. I believe you've proven your point, Miss Backer, he wheezed. She pressed her shoe down harder. I told you to call me Della. Whoa, remind me never to get on your mom's bad side, Keith said. A valuable lesson for everyone, Della agreed jumping to the ground and offering Mr. Forkel a hand up. Everyone believes I'm the fragile beauty hiding in my husband's shadow, but I'm far more powerful than anyone imagines. I can see that, Mr. Forkel wiped mud off his long black tunic, but I alone cannot approve your admittance into our organization. All I can promise is to bring the matter before our collective. Collective, Sophie asked. Our ruling order, Mr. Forkel clarified. Five overseers, with each with equally weighted votes. So there are four other leaders we've never met, Kif asked. There are many members you haven't met. But that is a good thing. The more people we have helping our cause, the more chance we have of making a difference. All the more reason to let me join, Della said. Perhaps, Mr. Forkel agreed. I'll make this a su suggestion when I speak with the collective. But first, we have a problem. I did not plan for a stowaway, so we are short one lufturator. I can tweak mine so two can share, Dex said, bending his into a, she a Z shape. He made a few more tweaks before holding up the mouthpiece proudly. Now it works on each end. They'll have to keep their faces very close together, Mr. Forkel noted. Foster and I volunteer, Kip shouted. Ah, oh, if anyone's going to share with Sophie, it should be me, Dex argued. Wait, why do I have to share? Sophie asked. Yeah, I nominate Dex and Keith. Fitz agreed. So do I, Mr. Forkel decided. Keith, give your love traitor to Della. Wait, what just happened? Keep ask. Fitz, Bianna, and Sophie cracked up. Dex fumed as Mr. Forkel ordered him and Keith to test the gadgets to make sure the lifterators still worked. They had to stand so close their noses practically touched. 
Gross, Keith whined, spitting out his mouthpiece. The air tastes like Dex breath. Keith breaths just as nasty, Dex snapped. But you can breathe, Mr. Fork clarified. When they nodded, he ordered everyone into the water. They gasped as the cold soaked through their clothes, except Della, who strode through totally dry. Did you know your mom could do that? Sophie asked Fitz. I did, Bianca jumped in. And I'll figure out how to do it. She blinked out of sight, and when she reappeared, her hair was dripping wet and stuck to her face. It's going to take some practice. I still can't believe you didn't tell me mom was with us, Fitz grumbled. Now you know how I felt when you and dad were busy planning all your secret visits to the Forbidden Cities. Sophie had never considered how much the search for her had affected the Vacker family. They'd all lived with secrets and broken the law for 12 years. The river grew deeper and they switched from wading from wading to swimming. Sophie struggled to paddle while holding her backpack until Fitz reached over and carried it for her. Thanks, she mumbled, wishing she could swim so effortlessly. Within minutes, he had reached the elephant-sized water dinosaurs. Ichodons are friendly, right? She asked Bianna. Of course, Bianna swam to a purple-toned Ichodon and stroked the base of its neck. See? Totally harmless. Sophie swam to a blue-toned Ichodon and it made a gurgly, gro growling sound. Growling sound. That's how it says hi, Fitz promised, pulling himself on this green Ichodon's back. Sophie covered him while transmitting friend over and over. Her tweaked genes allowed her to communicate telepathically with animals. She couldn't tell if the Ikodon understood. Some creatures thought in images or emotions. Still, the Ikodon didn't chomp her head off, so she took that as a good sign. Dex and Keith, meanwhile, were having a very difficult time figuring out how to sit on their Ikodon. After several hilarious attempts, they settled for Keith facing backwards with his arms wrapped around Dex and Dex reaching ar around Keith to hug Ikodon's neck. You guys look so cute, Fitz told them. Dude, your payback is going to be legendary. Keep warned. Love the Raiders in. Mr. Forkel called before Dex could add his own threats. Sophie took one last deep breath and slipped the gadget into her mouth. She, she barely grabbed her Ikodon's neck before Mr. Forkel shouted, Dive! Down, 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 they plunged all the way to the bottom of the river where the water felt cold and gritty. <coughs> Sophie's balefire pendant gave her just enough light to see Fitz as his Ikodon swam up beside her. He held out a thumbs up to ask if she was okay. She nodded, talking several sh taking several shallow breaths as he pointed to where Mr. Forkel and Della had taken the lead. Sophie was glad her Ikodon seemed to be following on its own since she had no idea how to steer a police resort. Fitz stayed beh beside her with Bianna right behind, and Dex and Keith a little farther back. The Ikodon swam at a steady pace until the shore dropped away and Sophie realized they'd reached the ocean. Then each Ikodon stretched out its neck, tucked its flippers, and let out a piercing scream. The shrill whine was louder than whale song, richer than dolphin squeaks, and powerful enough to part the tide. The sound pitched higher than lower, swirling the water into a funnel, then blasted the Ikodon forward like a rocket. Whenever the vortex sh slowed, the creature cried again, blasting them faster and faster until Sophie was sure they'd cross the whole ocean. And maybe she was right, because when they finally slowed the water, slowed, the water was tropical till and swarming with colorful fish. The surface minutes later, they surfaced minutes later, floating along a river that cut through an enormous underground cavern. A thin crack split the ceiling, letting in just enough sunlight to bounce off the glinting rock walls. Everywhere the light touched, life had followed, transforming the cave into a subterranean forest. The farther the river led them, the more the cave widened until all Sophie could see in any direction was the ever-stretching paradise. Can you believe this place? Fitz whispered. Sophie inhaled the sweet, heady scents. Honeysuckle, jasmine, plumeria plus dozens of other aromas she couldn't recognize. It definitely wasn't the bleak cavern she'd expected after her previous experience with the black swan hideout. Okay, I am done with Dex snuggle time, Kif announced as he and Dex's Ikodon swam up beside Sophie's. He leapt from his plesiosaur to hers and prodded Sophie's Ikodon to swim away from the rest of the group. Relax, he said, tightening his grip on Sophie's waist. I won't let you fall. 
That wasn't why she felt nervous. The last time she'd sat like this with Keith, they were flying with, Syl with Sylvanie across the ocean. The alicorn had been carrying them to the Black Swan that night as well. Sophie hoped this time wouldn't end so violently. Keith must have been sharing the same terrifying memories because he whispered, I will never let my mom hurt you again. I didn't let your mom do anything, Keith. You know that, right? You heard what Arlie said. The council's blaming my dad for not knowing what my mom was up to. But he's not the only empath who lived with her. You told me yourself, you can't feel a lie, only the emotions that go along with it. I still wasn't paying close enough attention. Why would you? No one assumes their family is evil. He tends it to word and Sophie glanced over her shoulder. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Yes, you did. And she is. And I shouldn't have seen it. You can't do that, Keith. Adeline told me once that hindsight is a dangerous game. The clues seem too obvious when you know what to look for. Believe me, I would know. She replayed her kidnapping and Kenrick's murder more times than she'd ever admit. And each time she saw more warnings she shouldn't have missed. But she couldn't let herself take the blame. The elven mind couldn't process that level of guilt. Their sanity shattered under the weight of the burden. She'd watched it happen to Alden over his guilt from what happened to Prentice. An innocent member of the Black Swan he'd condemned to madness and exile before he realized the Black Swan weren't really the villains. The only reason he could still function was because Sophie had found a way to heal him. Please, she whispered. You have to protect your mind, Keith. We both do. Okay. He said, after a painful silence, So we, we catch these guys and make them pay for what they've done. Can you really do that? Sophie asked. I mean, it's your mom. I know you think it won't matter, but it won't. She used me, tried to kill me, tried to kill my friends. And don't say she saved Biona on Mount Everest, but she did. They would have rolled off that cliff if she hadn't stopped them. Right, so she was saving herself and Biona was lucky enough to benefit. Sophie wanted to argue, but she could tell it wouldn't help. Plus, maybe Kif needed to hold on to his anger. Anger was safer. If you ever need to talk, she whispered. Thanks, he whispered back, so close, so close she could feel his breath on her cheek. His arms tightened ever so slightly, making her heart switch to hummingbird pace. Listen, Sophie, I... You're still wearing your soccer punch, Dex interrupted as his he couldn't caught up with them. If he's annoying you, just knock him off with a good backhand. Man, one second you're sharing your air with a dude and the next second he's trying to get you punched in the face. Keith mumbled, isn't that pretty much what everyone wants to do after they meet you? Fitz asked as he and Bionna swam up beside them on their ecodons. Keep it up, dude. You're just adding to my list of reasons to punish you, Keith warned. Fitz shrugged, bring it on. You guys are ridiculous. Bionna said, staring at the glinting rocks of the cave above them. Does anyone know where we are? Yes, Mr. Forkle called from up ahead. Your new home. 